Hello, today I'm reviewing the Zowie FK2C. This is their thin and low profile option out of their current lineup. It is an absolutely legendary shape that has inspired many of the most popular knights today, and I've been really enjoying my time with it overall, despite not preferring low profile shapes in general. So today I want to go over the features of this mouse, as well as discuss the shape to see if this will be right for you. Alright, let's get into it. Zowie has brought a few Q updates with their C series, and I think the most important of which is the weight reduction. The FK2C here in particular weighs in about 72 grams. That is over 10 grams lighter than the previous iteration, and you could really tell the difference. It makes the mouse so much more comfortable to use now that it is at a very standard weight compared to the rest of the market. Of course, I would like this to be lighter, and I do think lighter is always better, but I feel that 72 grams is a very democratic weight. Whether you're used to using bricks or ultralight mice, I feel that you will be able to get used to 72 grams and have it feel very comfortable for you. Zowie has also reduced this weight reduction without compromising build quality whatsoever. This mouse feels absolutely solid in hand. There's no creaking, no flex, and it feels like it's built like an absolute tank. I actually can get it to creak and I do a stress test though. But this will never occur during normal use, and you have to squeeze the mouse in a very specific way. As long as you leave it fat on your table, this thing is absolutely solid. Then the next biggest update for me is this new and improved cable. It is far more flexible than their past rubber options. And while it still isn't quite as good as an aftermarket cable, I don't have any issues with this in-game whatsoever. I feel no need to replace this with an aftermarket cable, and I overall feel that this is one of the best dog cables out there. The only real issue that I can possibly find with it is that it's thick and somewhat floppy during use. If you leave too much slack, you could very easily end up running over your cable when you're resetting your mouse. But if you have even halfway decent cable management, and you are able to limit slack like I have, then you should have no issues with this whatsoever. I think that only the most sensitive people to cables will be able to notice this during use. And even if you are one of those people, I would just recommend that you go to a wireless mouse. If something like this bothers you, then a paracord won't be a huge difference and I think wireless is going to be your only option. But for the vast majority of people, especially frequent wired mouse users, you should have absolutely no issue with this whatsoever, it feels great. This C-series also updated the coating. It feels far more rubberized and grippy than the past editions. You don't get that same feeling of your sweat building up on the surface and making it feel gummy like you did on the old Zowie mice. Instead, no matter how sweaty I get, I always feel like I can get a very solid grip on this. I have extremely sweaty hands, so fighting a coating that works out well for me is always pretty difficult, but I've had no issues with the new Zowie C-series. The only fault I could find with this coating is that it does pick up fingerprints and oils very easily. Every single fingerprint gets picked up by the coating and it just makes the mouse look very dirty on your table. It doesn't matter how diligent you are about washing your hands or frequently cleaning your mouse. All the oils that come out of your hand will directly stick to the coating. I actually don't notice these oils impacting my grip all that much though, but it is still a massive aesthetic downside. These mice start to look really dirty really quickly. Now the final C-Series update is their new 24-step scroll wheel. And the FK2C in particular actually has a better implementation of this new design than the other C-Series mice. It feels slightly more stiff, but is overall much more well-tensioned. You can see that the very moment I click the scroll over, it quickly returns back to its neutral position. This makes it feel sharper and much more crisp than the other C-Series mice. But this tactility does come with the downside of making it extremely loud during use. This wasn't a problem for me because I am used to vaccine mice that are just about as loud as this. But if this is your first time using a very loud scroll wheel, you will hear this through headphones for a couple of days. And while I do like how very crisp and very well-defined the steps are, I feel that a lot of people won't end up liking the scroll. If you like something that feels light and smooth, this is absolutely not for you. These are the most well-defined, the most chunky steps I've ever experienced on a scroll. It is so tactile it almost feels fatiguing for me. It almost feels as if the scroll is hitting my finger each time I move up and down across it. Over long sessions, it starts to build up and just feels more uncomfortable than a smoother scroll wheel would be. This is the first time I've ever said this, but I would actually prefer this wheel to be slightly less tactile because of the slight fatigue I experience. Alright, now on to something that hasn't changed with the C-Series, which are the old classic black Zowie stock feet. I actually don't think the Zowie stock feet are that bad. On controlled cloth surfaces, they actually feel pretty smooth once you break them in. They will add a lot of friction and make these already slow pads feel even slower, but the experience is genuinely premium, as long as you can get used to that speed. Where they start to break down are on these rougher, faster surfaces. On these type of surfaces, I feel that the feet are significantly less satisfying and overall feel very scratchy and almost miss the mark on making the texture feel good. So if you do like these types of pads, I would highly recommend you replace them with aftermarket feet, like the core pads I have here. You will get a much more premium experience that will match the rest of this mouse. But if you are using a more smooth surface and you do like that control, then I don't think the stock feet are that bad. Actually, the major issue that I had with the stock feet on the other C-Series mice was that they were so thin that they ended up creating a very high LOD setting. But on the FK line in particular, the LOD adjustment actually works. So you can switch your mouse to the low LOD setting and get a pretty standard feeling liftoff experience. It feels weird to have to mention in a review that an LOD adjustment setting actually works. But alas, that is where we're at with the C-Series. Unfortunately, only one out of three currently has a functioning feature that is standard on almost every other mouse. Alright, so now onto the least favorite part about this mouse for me personally, which are the main clicks. These are very stiff and overall unsatisfying feeling. It doesn't actually feel like the switch itself is that stiff. It just seems that the connected shell design makes it much harder to press down the buttons without actually affecting the actuation force of the switch itself. There is still a good amount of tactility and the switches don't feel mushy at all. It's just so unnecessarily stiff feeling. 
it feels like you have to slam your clicks down to actuate them instead of just getting a nice and satisfying click. The one saving grace of these main clicks, though, is that they have a very large amount of well-tensioned post travel. This post travel helps to just give a little bit of cushioning at the end of your click, which you are really going to need, because it does feel like you are slamming your clicks down when you use them. If it didn't have this post travel and you were bottoming it out every time you clicked, it would feel absolutely horrendous. This right here is the one thing that saves these clicks from being horrendous to just mediocre. I can use these in-game, and it feels fine, but I would strongly prefer that they were just much lighter. I notice myself start to fatigue much more than I should when I'm playing a very click-intensive game, like Hanzo in Overwatch for example, where I have to click and hold my button instead of just tapping it. In these situations, I can feel the strain building up in my finger and it's just really annoying. If these were much lighter like the other C-series options, I think they would feel great, but as a current stand, they are too stiff to be satisfying, or pleasant to use. I think the side buttons also suffer a pretty similar fate. They are also stiff and bottom out into the shell pretty unsatisfyingly. Once again, if they're much lighter, this bottom out wouldn't be an issue. But since they are so stiff, you just have to slam them in. And when you do that, you just feel them going deep into the shell, instead of having any sort of satisfying backing. They actually do have a fairly nasty amount of tactility to them, so they aren't the worst I've ever experienced. But once again, could be much better. Alright, now on the fun part, the shape. This is an extremely low profile mouse. It very gradually slopes up from the back, reaches its highest point in the middle, and then goes down in the buttons again. This very low back in particular completely removes the hump that you find on many mice. The top of the mouse is also almost completely flat. The complete lack of a hump limits almost all hand contact. You can see here that at no point in the middle of my hand does the mouse make any sort of contact. Although it actually does give you two anchor points here and here right where it flares out. This allows you to still have something to grab onto here and here with your hand, here and here, but without actually filling out your hand in any sort of way. This is really what defines the hand feel of the FK2 in my opinion. You can still get stability from the flares, but the complete lack of contact gives you almost full mobility. Compare this to something like the GPX. They have very similar curvature from the side, but the top of the GPX is much higher and more rounded. This allows it to get much more hand contact even though the hump is still in the middle and not rear facing. The feeling of stability is pretty similar because they have almost identical mounting points here and here on each mouse, but the FK2 allows for a much higher range of motion because of how much less it contacts your hand. What I think to be the next most important feature is this extremely low button height. These buttons are far lower than most mice, especially since they're grooved and you can dig your fingers much deeper into them. This brings your hand very close to the pad, and I really like this feeling. I would describe it like feeling like you're choking up on a pencil. You always feel really precise to the writing if you can get your fingers really close to the paper, but if you hold your pencil further back at the eraser, it becomes very sloppy. Mice almost behave in the same way, but of course, the difference isn't that exaggerated. But even getting your fingers just a few millimeters closer to the pad, I feel helps me to be more precise with my correction movements. The sides of this mouse are also pretty interestingly designed. As you can see here, they're very thin, and you actually don't have much room to place your fingers across them. When I have my thumb on my standard grip, I really have no room to move it up without impacting the side buttons. And the same can also be said for the right side. If I move my ring finger up much at all, I end up falling off this edge here. This lack of vertical space to place my fingers makes it so that my hand is almost always in contact with the pad while I'm using the FK2. If I don't want my fingers to drag against the pad, I don't feel like I have very many options. I can pull my fingers up on the mouse and prevent them from contacting the pad, but this does feel much less comfortable for me, and I feel that most people will end up dragging their fingers against the surface. The sides also have very gently swooping curves. I feel that these strike a very nice balance between being able to lock your fingers in place along the curve, as well as also giving you enough room to place your fingers freely. I think that more aggressive curvature would lead to better results, but a safer shape like this will just be able to be used by more people. So in summation, FK2 shape is very low, very flat, and overall works to limit hand contact as much as possible in this area of the mouse, as well as curved in such a way to get a good grip on, but not really force your grip in any specific position. Alright, so now on a grip styles that I think will work very well with the FK2 shape. And while I do still think that the shape is fairly safe, I think that there are only a couple of grips that would work really well with it. I think that the first and most obvious of which is of course a relaxed fingertip grip, like this. Here I'm able to limit the low height of the mouse to completely eliminate contact in this middle area of my hand. And then the hump is so low and non-existent that it's very easy to make no contact with my palm whatsoever. Here I feel I have a pretty high degree of motion, and it overall feels pretty good for this type of fingertip grip. The only real issue that you run to this grip is that the mouse is still pretty long. I find myself hitting my palm a lot and overall limiting my vertical movement capabilities. Overall, much shorter mice like the Viper Mini, or especially the Razor Orochi, allow for a much higher degree of vertical motion as compared to the FK2. This will of course be hand size dependent though. For reference, my hands are 18 by 9 to 9.5 centimeters. If you have much larger hands, you will be able to notice a much higher degree of vertical motion with the FK2, but you will still be able to move less than the Viper Mini or the Orochi. Side to side motion still feels perfect though, and I do overall like this mouse for this relaxed fingertip grip. I think the most common grip that most people fall into is actually a claw on this mouse though. You can very easily get a style of claw grip where you curl your fingers back and push the mouse into this back region of your palm right here. You can feel the entire swoop on this flare here, making almost complete contact with this back crescent in your hand. 
if you're someone that likes to get a more aggressive claw grip and really pull your mouse back into the heel of your hand. But you still don't want any sort of contact up in this area right here, and only down here at the bottom of your palm. Then I think the FK2 is actually a fantastic option for you. This was the grip that I initially fell into, and it was the most comfortable for me at first. It just feels very natural to get this aggressive claw grip. But I, however, don't actually prefer these shapes for a claw grip myself. When I claw, I want a lot more hump in the back. I really like that feeling of filling out this area of my hand here to give me extra support. But if you are someone that doesn't like your hand getting filled out here, and you only like your mouse contacting here, then the FK2 is going to be great. You can get a similar grip to this on something like the Viper Mini or the Ultralight 2, but these mice will feel significantly smaller in comparison, and you will have to curl your fingers back much more to make this happen. If you want something that feels a little bit more relaxed, but can still fill out your hand, then the FK2 will be able to provide that same feeling for you, but in a larger, more comfortable package. My favorite grip to use in this mouse is actually more of a fingertip claw hybrid. In my personal grip, almost all my aiming is done with my fingers, but I still am able to reinforce my grip right here and here on the very edges of my hand. These points of contact don't actually do any work on the mouse. They're just there to support my finger movements. I feel it adds some extra stability to have these two points of contact when you're making these small inner hand finger motions. And it's the feeling of these finger motions that eventually ended up making me like this mouse. As I said earlier, I just defaulted to the aggressive claw grip where I just pulled it into the heel of my hand. This made the shape feel very unspectacular for me because I didn't feel like this mouse did anything better than anything else that I currently used. But after a couple weeks of toying around with my grip and I was able to finally get this more like claw fingertip hybrid, I noticed that my micro corrections started to excel. I'm able to use my fingers so freely in this type of grip, and I feel like I'm going to be extremely precise while also being relaxed, because I have the added benefit of this little bit of hand contact here just making me feel more secure. Small movements and microcorrections feel fantastic in this grip, but I do still feel that larger motions start to suffer for me personally. This is because larger wrist and arm motions make the extra length of those mouse feel very clunky. With only 18 centimeter hands, I end up feeling like I sometimes end up running into my mouse when I'm trying to make these large movements. I could feel here right at the end of a motion. This little ridge right here ends up digging into my hand and sometimes it ends up throwing off my initial accuracy. I still do feel that I can correct this very easily though, because once again, these finger motions feel perfect. But there is still some added clunkiness when using a mouse this long for fingertip at my hand size. This for me is probably what's gonna end up holding this mouse back from becoming part of my main rotation. I really value my mouse having a good hand feel and not feeling clunky at all during use. And while I do still get some of my most precise moments with this mouse, I feel that those little bits of inconsistencies like where I just miss having a larger hump, really end up negatively impacting my enjoyment. But this was still very consistently fun while I used it, because it is a shape that is slightly out of my comfort zone. Sometimes it just feels good to use something that makes you aim in a different way than you normally do. But I still don't think this will end up replacing my S2C anytime soon. I just really enjoyed that hump. If you are someone that can get away with not using a hump at all though, then I still think the FK2C is an excellent option. All the quality is top notch, and really the only fault I can find are the clicks. If these stiffer clicks aren't an issue for you, then this is absolutely a top tier mouse. Alright, thank y'all for watching. See you in the next one.